Welcome to this episode of Tea Time with Taryn. If you haven't already subscribed, take a moment, hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll get notifications when I have new videos up. So I'm just cutting some cardstock into quarter sizes and after that I'm going to fold it in half again and it's just going to be a mini card this first one. I'm going to be doing two cards with this technique and the first one is just a really simple basic one and I'm cutting one of those quarter sheets in half again because that is the first layer I'm going to be working with. So I'm working on a rubber mat and so my tape is, is not going to stick to it. So you want to start with a surface like that, especially if you're layering tape. So I can put it together and um, peel it off no problem. So I've cut it now to size because I didn't want those tear pieces on the end the way that the um, tape dispenser makes those ridges. And I've now of course added it to the first layer of my card. Just using paints, these are inks, but of course you can use watercolors. I'm just going ahead and painting right over the um, tape. Make sure that you've pressed the tape in nice and hard. I just use scotch tape. Um, any uh, water resistant tape would probably be best. I wouldn't recommend washi tape for this. So I just dabbed off the excess just so that I'm not dealing with a mess and I'm using my heat gun to dry the paint but not only that it's also going to help me remove the tape because the, the tape is going to bond to the paper and the heat is actually going to relax the adhesive on the tape. So that's going to make it a lot easier for me to remove the tape from this paper. That's really the trick. You really want to heat it up because that way the tape isn't going to tear when you peel it away from the paper. So I found that actually by heating it as I pulled that really helped. Now if you're using this the way I am, make sure you're not aiming the gun at your fingers for too long because of course you're going to burn yourself. Really just like a second or two just to uh, melt the, the tape is perfect and it peels off so easily it comes off as smooth as butter and you can see it didn't tear and it left this perfect clean impression to finish my card I'm just going to add a little bit of a backing to it I'm going to um, slice everything a little bit smaller because it's going on a very small card so I'm just trimming a little bit off the edges because I I'm adding two more layers between this one. So I believe I'm just cutting a quarter of an inch off all around. And this layer I'm going to cut to the size of the card base. This kind of thing is probably perfect for um, Valentine's Day that's coming up and if you wanted to make uh, small little cards to give to your friends or um, if you were making cards for your kids to take to school. This would be the perfect size, I would think. Now stick around because there is a second card that I'm going to be making and I'm going to be using double-sided tape and a die cut and it's a very cool technique so um, hold tight for that one as well. So right now I'm just attaching all of my layers using double-sided tape because I that's what I had out. And there's the first card complete. So for the second technique I'm using a die cut. Um, for information on where you can buy the die cut and the other um, supplies I'm using today, check my blog and the links to my blog will be listed below. So I'm just adding double-sided tape, the amount that I need to cover my um, die. And I'm just going to attach that and I'm going to use some washi tape just to secure it so it doesn't move as it goes through my machine. I use a cuddle bug. I should mention that the double sided tape I'm using does have a backing to it that you can peel off later. Now that it's gone through my machine I'm going to carefully remove it so I don't tear anything and I'm just going to poke through all those little pieces that aren't falling through on their own 
Sometimes it helps just to use tweezers or something small to poke through. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attach it to the card. I'm removing the backing from the double sided tape. You're going to want to make sure that it is pressed firmly into place so that when you paint, none of the paint finds its way underneath the adhesive. Once you're completely satisfied, you can go ahead and paint over your die cut image. This one has lots of little nooks and crannies, so really pushing the, uh, the brush into those little spots so they don't get missed. I didn't really know what colors to do. I didn't plan out the colors beforehand, so I decided I'd just mix it up and do a bunch of different colors. This would be perfect if you were using really, really deep colors, I think, especially on the white, it would be good a good contrast. So I think I should have picked some darker, deeper colors for this to really um, give you a, a really beautiful effect. But it still, it still turned out nice. So of course now I'm just going to dry all the paint before I peel up the die cut image. And this of course is helping melt the tape as well. This is a much heavier duty tape so it's going to take a little more effort as far as heating it up as I go. decided this would make a cute wedding card so I just stamped a little Mr. and Mrs. in that little um, white area and on the inside I thought I would take it another step further because I'm having so much fun with this technique and I'm going to add the inside sentiment but I'm also going to surround it with watercolor using this masking technique. I don't know if I was getting carried away at this point, but I even made a little spot on the back for me to write my handmade by surrounded by the watercolor effect. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my blog for more. And until next time, happy crafting.